Ooh, what's good, Ravens Flock? It's your boy Gabriel to the Fan TV. Back at you in the video, man. Let the content in this video go ahead and smash that like button. Let the content in this channel go ahead and subscribe, man. Ravens content coming at you on a daily basis, man. Uh, so today's Wednesday, you know, let's do the injury report, practice report kind of thing. See where the Ravens are currently standing going into their weekend matchup. So obviously this Sunday, it is the Buffalo Bills. So where are the Ravens at right now ahead of that matchup, okay? Now, uh, first bit of news, obviously, JPP is officially a Baltimore Raven. He had his first practice today, and uh, he's rocking the number four, man. I think the number four looks pretty good on him. I know some people are a little bit like, oh, well, that's Sam Cooke's number. I mean, you can't retire by them, and, 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 not, and not a punter. You know, we love Sam Cooke, but it is what it is. Uh, so, JPP is out there. Looks cool number four. All right, so now let's talk about the guys who have not practiced today. So, as far as not practicing, uh, Jalen Armour Davis did not practice. <laughs> Michael Pierce did not practice. Now, John Harbaugh did get a little insight on Michael Pierce. He said that Michael Pierce uh, has a torn bicep, and it's up to Michael Pierce whether to either play through the bicep injury or get season-ending surgery. So he said the decision is completely on Michael Pierce. Whatever he does, the Ravens are going to back him and go with it. So, you know, we'll wait on Michael Pierce's decision on that front, okay? Uh, Patrick McCarr had, you know, the ankle injury. He's not. He wasn't out there. Uh, Calais Campbell, Justin Houston, uh, Marcus Peters, you could all say, had veteran days of a sort. Uh, Justin Houston Dick is listed kind of like with a groin injury, but you know he usually doesn't have, he usually doesn't practice on Wednesdays anyway. So we're not really sure that's because of the groin, because of the vet day, or this could be a combination of other two. You know, so we'll see what happens with that. All right. Um, mentioned Marcus Peters coming off a really good game Sunday versus the Patriots, but you know they're still not. Full throttle practice it all the way through, which is fine. He's a vet too. You know, he doesn't need to be practicing all week. Take the Wednesday off, cool, come back. Um, so also Harbaugh said that this could be the week Ronnie Stanley plays. I know Ronnie Stanley had updates or whatever, but I if, if Harbaugh misses it, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna say it, you know, gotta gotta get out there, all right? So he said this could be the week for Ronnie Stanley, okay? So uh that's the major as far as like injuries and things like that. The Ravens are, you know pretty good you know so week three not too bad anything like that i did want to talk about some moves that the ravens have made um since last week obviously since some certain things have happened they released daryl worley just to resign him now i believe that was to get roster spots open for the sign other guys now other guys that they did sign uh, uh guard zach johnson 6'6 315 pounds big guy undrafted in 2020 he last played for the denver broncos he signed directly to the practice squad so, you know, they're looking for some offensive line help. Um, you know, we'll see if he has any versatility to play different spots. But, you know, the Ravens are not trying to be in, to, in a position where they're super low. Nobody can play offensive line. Um, so, you know, they, they keep they keep signing guys, keep trying out guys. They tried out two guys. Uh, one, I believe, his name was Alex Taylor. And the other guy was like Ty uh, Neshecki or something like that. I probably mispronounced his last name. But it was something of that nature. So the Ravens are constantly bringing in guys on the offensive line to try and solidify the unit and uh, just so they got enough bodies to, you know, keep protection in front of Lamar Jackson, keep the running game going and things of that nature, okay? Now, one of the moves that they did that was, I guess, interesting is that they released Mikai Polk from the practice squad, so he's no longer with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, now, this move was interesting to me just because he's one of the better, I would say, pure receivers that they had on the practice squad, you know, as, as a whole. But I get it because he didn't have special teams capability, and we know how important that is, uh, especially when you play for Harbaugh. So I guess he's got it as an easy cut if they need if they needed the spot. We've seen Riley Webb uh, get activated, I believe, back to back weeks and play really only special teams. So you know, if you're gonna make the roster, you're gonna have to grind out a couple of years on special teams. That just seems to be the route, you know, whether for better or for worse. That's just what it is. Okay, now. They did sign a guy that we could potentially see play, and that is uh, Jeremiah Atachu. Um, so he's an eight-year veteran, outside linebacker, second-round pick, I believe, of the uh, of the Chargers, and 20 and a half career sacks. He last played for the Chicago Bears last year, uh, 29 years old. So this is a guy that was a former, you know, highly touted draft pick, second-round pick. I believe he went like number 50 overall, something around that range. So you know, good pedigree, things of that nature. Um, 
He was with the Bears, now he's here. So he could provide something for the Ravens. He's not as old as, say, even like a Jason Pierre-Paul or anything like that. Or even a Copeland who was like 31. So, you know, he's a little bit on the younger side. You know, I'm not saying he's a young player, but on the you know, young side from the guys that they have been signing. So maybe he can provide some more energy and pass rush as well. We'll see, though. You know, these guys get on the practice squad. They're just bodies until they activate on the active roster. Because perfect example is, you know, I did a video on TJ Kerrigan about what he could bring to this Ravens secondary. And he never really he never really played for the Ravens. So the Ravens ended up cutting TJ Carey. Um, you know, that that's what the new practice squad system really is for. It's kind of just for rotating guys in and out. If you need some help here, okay, bring this guy here. You know, I need oh, we need a corner. Get a corner practice squad just in case. Okay, we need an outside linebacker. Get an outside linebacker with a practice squad just in case. Oh, now the offensive line is being decimated with injury. Okay. Let's get a um let's get some more offensive linemen out there as well. All right. So those are some of the moves the Ravens did. Um, I think signing the outside linebacker is a good move. They're going to need it. Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks we get guys like Ty's Bowser back. I'm not looking for a job before at least another month, month and a half at, at the earliest, in my opinion, if at all. Um, so, But Bowser, hopefully we can get him back in the next, I would say, two weeks or so. Um, obviously he's not eligible for this week. But week five is his first eligible week off the pup list. So that's going to be a big, big uh moment to see if he can actually practice see if he can actually play in the game uh i would love to see that for ties balls he's one of the ravens i would say more important players in pass coverage and uh rushing the passer they're going they need his help you know both ways honestly so i'm looking forward to that um i thought the makai polk release was kind of interesting i thought that he would stick around but maybe he doesn't get picked up and the ravens can pick him back up who knows we'll see what happens with that kind of stuff and as far as the injury front like I said, you know, mostly veteran days. Nobody that's really surprising. I didn't see what the... I'm still looking for it. I haven't seen the designation on Jalen Armour Davis as far as why he didn't practice. But we know it's been a little bit of a rough goal for him to start out. Um, but he's a rookie. You know, he'll get together. I think the Ravens are putting him in a lot of tough situations. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage or just... Um, just where he just does. He doesn't seem fully ready to play. So we'll see if they actually talk about what's happening and why he wasn't, um, you know, out there. You know, I haven't, I haven't seen that just yet. So, uh, but everybody else is practicing. Um, so, you know, it's another week. We're rolling on to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, should be a good game. And the Ravens are heading to that uh, pretty healthy, you know. So we'll see what happens with Michael Pierce. That's the main big injury. Will Michael Pierce decide to have that season-ending bicep surgery or will he decide to play through it? Uh, tough decision for him. I mean, he's had a really, really good year so far. Um, so, you know, hey, listen, I, I understand either way. If he wants to keep playing, obviously he loves the game. But if he wants to take care of that bicep, you know, it's probably causing him, I, I would assume, a tremendous amount of pain and uh, get that surgery. I, I, hey, listen, we understand that as well. So that's kind of the Ravens update today uh, as far as the injury report, the practice report, what's going on with the team. And, uh, yeah, man, so uh, Jason Pierre paused for his practice. That's, that's good. Hopefully, we'll see him out there on Sunday. So, that's the update, man. It's your boy, Gabriel. There's another fan TV. Come on.